yeah, they look like they turned out okay. The new inlays came out all right. Today in my studio, I get to fix a couple of wedding rings. And so these are wedding rings from a friend of mine, a coworker that I work with. Of course, he's a coworker. Um, these are, I believe they're 14 karat gold each. This is the husband's band, the woman's band, and it's kind of cute. They're like the perfect couple. So wouldn't it figure that the rings fit inside of each other? Um, that's, I find that hilarious. Anyway, these rings had a small piece of lapis stone that broke inside this ring here. And some of the glue and remaining bits are inside the ring. Whereas this ring lost its lapis completely. So they both really love lapis. And so they've chosen that as their wedding band and they chose the design. Um, I'm not too sure why the design was chosen, but uh, they had these custom made. So we are going to reinstall some lapis pieces. And I just happen to have quite a bit of lapis to choose from. So here we go for a better view and to give you a better idea. This is her husband's ring. And so the lapis has completely fallen out of this ring here. It says to keep this at a four centimeter distance. Out of focus, in focus. Wow, that's really close to the camera. Sorry, I'm getting used to this new phone. It's a Nokia. Um, this is, I think, wait, which one fits inside which? There we go. That's what I was talking about in regards to the rings fitting inside of each other. So this is the men's ring. And see, there is no lapis remaining. So this, I really don't even have to clean out this area. Um, I can go ahead and just cut the lapis. And this is the little lapis chunk that I'm working with today. I'm just going to cut a small chunk out of this. It's the darker blue. These are a little bit lighter blue lighter of a blue lapis. These are all broken ends of cabs that I will be using. And this piece here, the lapis broke, sheared off and left some chunks with glue in it. So we'll be removing the sheared off pieces um, and all that good stuff. So here we go. First off, I want to talk about how we're going to remove the lapis piece out of this ring. And here in my awesome little tray, I have a ton of different cutting tools. So each one of these is a different size at the end. And each one has burrs, different angles of burrs. And so this one, I believe, is not one that I want to use because it actually has burrs on the inside of this small little U-shaped cup. So I want to find one with burrs on the outside in this one right here this has tiny little burrs i don't know if you can see those as i twist it you can see it sparkle those are the burrs and so those burrs will help me remove the lapis and the old glue that is sitting inside that ring without losing or scraping out a ton of the 14 karat gold Let me get my footstool in place. Every now and then you want to definitely make sure that you know what you are removing. So blow out what is coming out of the stone. Almost, almost there. So we have a little bit left down here and a little bit left at the top. Oh, 
Okay. That looks really nice. That looks clean to me. And actually, I may be taking a loop um, just to make sure that all the edges are cleaned out completely because I think if I take my tool and scrape this, oh yeah, see, I'm still removing little pieces here in this corner. So I don't know if you can see that. I don't think I need to run the tool. I think I need to just walk it around the edges to remove what's left in the corners. Okay, that looks really good. No more glue, no more lapis. Let's make sure that his ring, yeah, his ring was a clear, a clear removal of the stone, so we won't worry about that ring. So now I will get my tool set up with the grinder to cut this little piece into two pieces. Let's try to use one piece into two pieces. And the reason being why I would do that is so, for one, that the lapis matches, because some of the other lapis that I have is a lighter blue. And here, I will get out, I think, without moving or disturbing you too much, the tray. This is my tray of lapis I had to choose from. Um, I chose the darkest blue, and the reason being is because it's, uh, I don't know, I think it's prettier than the lighter blue lapis. And so I want to use, want to use this, this piece right here. Okay. Now these are the cutting discs that I'll be using to root, to cut the lapis. Got one of these guys on my, oh, and if you want to see here, this tool connects to a flex shaft that then connects to the motor up here. And there's a pedal down beneath that you can't see that I am stepping on in order to make it go zoom zoom. Woo! I'm gonna go get a mask on. Okay. As I always claim, I use my fish tank set sideways and I have a piece of cardboard, I hope you guys can see this, cut right here with two holes for my hands in it so that my tool can go in there, the rings can go in there, the stones can go in there, that way there is not a poof or cloud of dust going everywhere. However, for the purpose of these videos and the age of my fish tank and the number of scratches that are on it, it's really hard to see through the fish tank with a camera. Um, so as soon as I get my fish tank replaced, um, and my piece of advice, if you get a fish tank, you want to get a piece of glass for the top of the tank that you can toss when it gets scratched. Because as soon as the top of the tank is scratched, you have to get a new tank. Um, or scratched enough to where you can't see. So, get a uh, frame out of a picture, something that will fit on the top and serve as a protective cover for your fish tank. So, here we go. All right, you can probably hardly hear me through the mask that I'm wearing, but as you can see, this piece is much bigger than this piece. And actually, even if I cut this piece in half, I could probably make two lapis pieces for them, just in case if another one breaks. And I think that's what I'll do. As long as, let's look at it again. Let's make sure that I have enough for half. What do you think? I think I do. Okay, I'm going to cut it one more time. Hmm. 
All right. And I know it's not a perfect square. It kind of sets at an angle to match the design. So I'm going to start shaving it that way. Yeah, okay, it's still a little wide. And I don't want these stones sitting up too high off the ring because I do think that that is why they had issues before. Oh, come on, just stay. Sit on the ring kindly so I can see what you look like. I have the angle on the bottom right. I think the angle on the top is not... there that I just made for this gallery will continue to fall out of this ring or get nicked or um, not really survive and so I am gonna make a handful of extra pieces for them because I have enough lapis here um, but this lapis is not stabilized so it's chalky uh, so yeah we're gonna give them a little bit better of a shot at keeping the lapis in the ring by opening the gallery or deepening it just a little bit this is the tool that I'm using. It's got tiny little burrs on it. Sorry, trying to talk with the mask on my face. It's got tiny little burrs on it. And I am just going to grind this down a little bit on the inside so that the lapis sits a little deeper. Cutting the gallery.
little better. Now I put this lapis in the ring and I have it, it's standing up pretty tall. So I am not gonna grind down the top. I will actually glue this piece of lapis in there like this and then actually grind it down after it has dried, the glue has set. But this is the inlay piece for this ring. Um, now it's time for some glue. I'm just gonna use a standard super glue. And I have to remember exactly how this lapis sat into the ring. So we're gonna take this and set it. And I'm not worried about too much glue getting on the ring. And the reason being is because I can buff all the glues out if I need to and when I need to. As long as it doesn't get super glue to my freaking fingers. Holy crap. Nope, it is succeeding in just getting glued to my finger and not really staying into place. So I'm going to use this little guy here. Get back in there. Hmm. Ah, I felt it go into place. There we go. So, again, because the gallery is so shallow, I am not all that worried about the super glue on the rest of the stone. This will just come right off um, as I buff. So I will be buffing the rings for them and getting rid of some of these scratches, scuffs, nicks, dings, all that good stuff. I'll be making also some extra um, lapis pieces uh, using... Oh, ha, ha. My hands are getting shaky now. Um, my left hand does that. Look at this. Left hand. No, no shaking. Right hand. Nope. Okay. Anyway, um, I'll be making some extra pieces of lapis to mimic this piece uh, from his wife's ring. So then that way, if, if by chance these break or fall out... Um, I'll send them some super glue. This is, hey, dollar store super glue. Send them some super glue and a bag of the lapis pieces to put back in if they continue to fall out. So there's a uh, ring number one. Okay, so what looks like should be a really simple inlay can get to be a little difficult because you've got to get it a very specific size. So for this inlay, I want to set the stone down. It is ready to be glued into the ring. I am using just a standard super glue from the dollar store, super glue. And I'll set that in there, grab my stone. And even though my stone is higher than it should be, that's okay, I just want my stone to set in the ring in its gallery, make sure that it's in there. And all of this super glue will buff off with the buffing compound that I'll be using. Um, but I wanna make sure though that I just keep it in the stone like a that. So there is ring number two, and now to make some small pieces for them, just in case if this ever happens again uh, to their wedding rings, they can glue in the stone themselves and feel like they've got a way to repair their, their pieces. I have both rings with the lapis in them. Of course, the lapis is super tall, so that's gonna be ground down now. And I have made two extra little inlay pieces for them, just in case if this lapis breaks out, as well as two, and I don't know how they feel about um, ocean glass. It's called, I like to call it ocean glass. It's a blue, actually, I think it's beautiful. 
And of course it's not polished, it's just, you know, ground to the, the shape of what would need to fit in their ring. But just in case, if the lapis breaks out again and then again, we've got these two to go to. They're not finely polished, they would just bring the rings back to me. I would give them a bag uh, with these pieces all cut, ready to go. And this way it wouldn't take me much time to, to throw in the new pieces. So right now I will grind these lapis pieces down. I don't want them sticking high up above the ring. Oh, and the glue is dried before I do this. I want to use a different grinder buffer cutter and what I want to use is something that is like sandpaper um, at about a 500 grit and I do have I'm gonna get this buffing head off of here so this is the the awesome thing about these reversible tools is that when you have the um the reversible ones with the shafts um fordham like tools when they have a reverse speed you can quickly take these little uh screws out of your tool and switch your heads that you're going to be using um, i actually have made some little rounds of sandpaper and i will find what is close to the center and just puncture through the sandpaper with my screw. Turn my machine back to... Woohoo! Oh, no, that tore it. Sometimes that'll happen. So if you hold on to the sandpaper to get a tight... To get it to tightly screw in, sometimes you'll tear right through the sandpaper. So let's try that again. Get a couple of pieces of sandpaper, puncture through the hole. Okay, and I want to, you see how that sandpaper right there has kind of flapped out? I don't want that going into my threads. So I want to push that flap down and then try this again. and just go slowly and release. I was gonna go to a 500 grit, but I guess now I will be at a 1200 grit. And I doubled them up just so that the sandpaper will not uh, let loose on me because sometimes you have issues with the sandpaper spinning in place. All right, here we go. And I want to make sure, too, you see that I am sanding just ever so lightly on some of the gold. That's okay. I just want to make sure I get all of my super glue out of the off of the ring. And that this thing is flat. Enough. 
Okay, I think that one is okay. We're gonna do this one. I know I got quite a bit of super glue over on this side. What I'm trying to do with his ring, and what I successfully did with hers, there's no... There's a slight lip for the inlay, but you can hardly tell. For his, I really do not want a lip for the inlay, and the reason being is that that would cause a snag onto the stone for the stone to get taken out. And so, since that was a problem in the past for them, I want to make sure that the stone is nearly flat with the rest of the ring. Okay. I think I'm happy with that. Um, it's really flat. Okay, you can tell, actually you can tell by the flatness, the little um, flat spot here that the other jeweler did this to. Sanded it flat to the ring. And now what I want to do is buff these rings out. So I'm going to use the same head. I'm gonna turn reverse on. And let's hope the only thing I have to use is this felt wheel buffer. Usually, um, Zam will take off. Here is Zam right here. Zam will take off. The super glue. So let's see how it does. And you want to be careful when you use Zam not to burn the stone because the burn the stone can burn pretty easily if you go too fast. Zoom on that.
Okay. I think I managed to get off all the super glue. There we go. Now I did. And Wipe this thing off so you can see how good it'll look. Now, in order to get the Zam off, a quick bath in hot water with a um, toothbrush just dissolves the Zam. So, that is our inlay in the ring. I'm having a hard Okay, here is the ring. I'm not sure if this view is really the right view. I do still have a little bit of super glue right there along the edge that I can see and right along the edge over here. So I will be working on that. But as you can tell, there's no lip for the inlay to get caught and to break off. But the Zam is taking off the old scuffs and scratches and nicks. Um, here's an example. This is the old ring versus well, this is her ring versus his ring. Um, and the shine that the Zam actually brings to the rings is, is quite spectacular. Here is how they both turned out. With some of the... Um, oh, the Zam still on the rings. So to clean the Zam off, just run it under a hot bath of water with a little bit of soap and a toothbrush, and that will take care of all of the leftover buffing polish, in whatever it is that you use. Um, I just tend to use Zam more often, and again, this is Zam, Zam, Zam. Zam Team tends to work with a host of different metals, and it is not an, an abrasive um, buffing compound, so it is a much lighter buffing compound, meaning if you are looking to remove a huge, large uh, gouge out of a piece, and yeah, that's not going to be Zam. Um, Zam is a very smooth, light buffing compound that takes the light scuffs and scratches out of metals. So here are the rings finished, and into the kitchen they go to take a hot uh, suds bath, and back to my friends. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps someone fix a ring that they might have.